Diego Cordovez. Adam Schoenfeld. Welcome to The Scoop. Scoop. <laughs> Brought to you by Full Tilt Poker. And we had David Williams on last week. And uh, very interesting to hear about how he's running in the WPT Championship and his career overall. We need more. If you missed it, it's on Car Player TV. And uh, now we're going to go for more. Part, part two. two. Now, you talked before about how in this tournament in particular and lately you do have this calm about you and, and you're not upset about hands or at least you can deal with it. You were talking about getting coaching specifically for your, your mindset. How does that how does that work? Well, you know, I've started working with the guy. He's working with a lot of poker players, Sam mm-hmm. Chauhan, and it's just, I don't know what made me do it. I think I just saw the results and saw that, the, the, not the results from poker results, but I just saw, like, Josh is a really good friend of mine, saw how calm he seemed when things were bad for him in Bahamas, and I was like, hey, you know, what's going on with you? And he told me about it. And he just seemed like, for Josh, was a really emotional person at the poker table. And to course, see yeah. the difference that I made in him, and he said wonderful things about Sam. I was like, well, i got to look into this. So I seeked him out. We had a meeting. And since then, you know, we talk on the phone at night, and we talk in the daytime, in the morning. And I have to do, and I send him an email of things. Just, we just do different things to help stay positive. It's all about positive energy working with Sam. You've always seemed pretty calm and very positive to me, so it's not as if uh, this is a dramatic departure from the normal. I've seen David be a little negative. Yeah, no, it's not just that either. It's just inside, you have like mental breakdowns, you know, when things go bad. Even though I may not have shown it, you start to get salty Mm -hmm. about losing a pot, or you try to rush things, or you're just like, I'm going to get this guy. You know, you just get just just worked up. Yeah, you start running bad, and you try to just flip, you know, you try to force it, and it just really taught, taught me how to just stay focused, stay relaxed, and think positive things, and you know, if it goes bad and the tournament's over, there's another one coming up soon. And as long as you play your best and you do your best, eventually you're going to get the results you're mm-hmm. looking for. I heard uh, an interesting thing about Sam, uh, and I haven't met him, but uh, he imposes fines on his students <laughs> for, for leaks. So, But you don't have to pay the fine to him. You have to pay the fine to someone that you don't like. Is, is that accurate? Yeah, I mean, that was the first thing. <laughs> oh, he was describing wow. the fines for like the things you know you do, like getting angry out of line and negative thoughts. I'm thinking, man, this guy's really got a racket going. You know, we're going to pay for his services. Now we're going to pay him when we screw up. And so I was kind of, you know, I was th- hesitant to sign on with him. And he's like, and then you got to tell me the person you like the least, because then you're going to pay those fines to that person. So right. you really that have some fire. And it's, but the only problem is, I don't really have anybody I really dislike. And he, if he asked that question, who would I send the check to? Or whatever, I actually can't think of anyone because there's. We can work something out where, like you and I, feud, and I'll just take the. A lot of my friends have said that. Just say it's me, and we'll chop it up. (laughs) (laughs) But I really don't have anyone I really dislike. I mean, I get along with everyone. I I I don't think anyone dislikes me really that I know that knows me. I mean, Mm -hmm. maybe strangers have some preconceived notions. People that know me seem to like me. I like everyone, so I don't know who I'll write that check to. Luckily, I actually haven't. I've been working with them for about three weeks, and I haven't broken any of the of the things. So no fines yet. No fines. I don't actually see myself getting any fines. Sam kind of agrees we were talking about how I am, and he talks to me each day, and he just I seem to be following the program pretty well and, and comfortable with it and happy. So I needed some structure in my life, too. It gives me a little structure, so I needed that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was uh, talking to Diego earlier, and I was surprised that your bracelet came in stud. Yeah. Now, I don't think of you as a stud player. What's up, what's up with that? Uh, well, that's funny. That year, <laughs> I actually play all the games. I mean, I have a circuit event one in mixed games. You know, I have a bunch of caches in different games. I really just, I love all forms of poker, especially limit poker. I mean, I started playing limit hold'em, so stud was a natural, it was kind of fit. It was, it was another limit game. But that year, it was really, I hadn't really played stud much. I played the 10K the year before, and that, I had never played stud before the 10K. And the way I got to play it is I really was playing every event, and I wanted to play it. It was an 05. So me and Tuan Lee were in the room, and this guy was going to put me in. They were going to take a piece of me, Tuan and some of his friends, and they said, let's have a stud satellite. So we each took, it was kind of cheesy, we took 100 chips each, and we played 4-8 heads up, me and Tuan stud. And if I beat them, they were going to put me in, and I was going to play for like 40% of myself in this stud event. I had money, but I didn't want to just put my own money right. in a 10K stud event. Smart. Sure. So I crushed Tuan, and like, I won every hand. <laughs> it wasn't for the skill, and I just got dealt the best hand, and we only yeah. had 100 chips. You know, we had like, was that 12 big bets right. or something. That, that so structure's I, not necessarily going to yield the best player exactly. winning every time. So I beat or him, and, I, and they put me in the tournament. You know, they, they put me in, and I ended up missing the money by two spots. But I learned, I really learned a lot about stud after that tournament, and I started talking to Boston. He's a really good stud player and a friend of mine. Of course. Long time. And he just gave me a lot of pointers on stud, and then I started playing cash games at the Commerce. Mm-hmm. And I had, I think, what Doyle said is the biggest one he's ever heard of in any game. In the 100-200 stud game at the Commerce, in one session, it was like 33 hours, I won 84,000. Right. Playing 100 or 200. It's like a Phil <laughs> Ivy esque performance. I had yeah. racks on the floor just stacked up to the side of the table. I didn't want to cash them in because I thought it looked cool. And I was trying to go for 100, <laughs> and I got up to like 90, and I was so tired, and I was just like playing every pot trying to get to 100, and I realized it wasn't going to happen when I started sliding back, and I quit. And then word spread. People were just like, this guy won 84,000 and 100, 200, and right. was like, what the hell is going on? I mean, there's players at the table who remembered it. Was, it was unbelievable. Right. 400 big bets. So that doesn't speak. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I ran good. I mean, that's, that's just how it works. But, uh, 
people like that just really I played a lot of stuff. I put my hours into the cash games, mm. and it's probably my favorite game. So then coming into '06, I woke up for that tournament. I actually was going to take the day off because I've been playing every event. And then uh, one of my friends, I always used to make the joke, you know, how could I not be good at this game? They named it after me, just kind of being funny. So uh, <laughs> I, I, me and Evelyn had a house. It was me, Evelyn, Noah Boken, and Gene Gluck was staying there. And I woke up that morning, and I was, like, eating breakfast, and Gene's like, you're not playing today? I'm like, nah. She's like, why not? She's like, how could you not play the game they named it after you? Just my joke. And I was like, uh, I guess maybe I'll play, you know. So I sat around for a while, decided to go take my shot. It was like a $1,500 event. And I got down to, I think, four, 200 chips. You started with 1500 then. And I think we were playing one and two. It was unbelievable. Like two big, two, right. like a big bet. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that I, uh, uh, Maureen Faduniak was on my left, and I think I got it all in against her and made fives full of sevens. And then somehow into the day with like a hundred grand, and it was chip leader from then on. Never went down. I mean, ran over the tournament. Are you planning on playing tons of events at the World Series this year? Uh, last year was the first year I didn't play. My average has been like thirty-three or something a year, wow. and I've played nonstop. Last year hmm. I decided I'm only going to play. The ones I really like in the big buying events. And I think I played 13 last year. I made one final table and like three or four caches, which was good. But uh, it was it was nice. It was re- to be able to come home and relax. I had a birthday party because I've never been to have a birthday party. And I had a party because I just took the tournaments off for my birthday. But uh, I don't know. I'm really starting to get that poker bug again. And mm-hmm. Samson worked with me. And have, you know, success is kind of building. And if I do well here, which I've already done well, but if I keep it up, I think that's going to make me want to play more. So I'm not going to set in stone if I'm going to play a lot or not. I'm just going to see how I'm feeling. And if I feel like I'm playing my best, I'm mm-hmm. going to show up the next day. If I feel like I'm not going to play my best, I'm just going to take the day off. This is not scientific at all. It's more anecdotal. But it seems like the last couple of years, now that they have a noon event, a 5 p.m. event, and the events have much better structures and last longer, some of the guys who really try to play every event are not having as good results because it's so much more exhausting and more brutal and that it may be a better strategy to focus on 15 to 20 events rather than trying to play yeah, 40 I mean, events. Yeah, no, for or, sure. Like, I could definitely say that in the World Series where I was playing 33 when it was over, I felt miserable, hated poker, hated myself. I was and even like during the... Oh, yeah, I mean, toward the end, it was just coming into the main event, you couldn't play your best because you've been burning yourself you're out. You're worn down, like, negativity starts seeping some, in. some well-known, very, very strong players who last year I know started 0 for 15 or 0 for 20, and I think part of it is just that it really just wears you down. I remember two years ago, I think, Phil Ivey decided because he was very motivated by all the bracelet bets and other bets that he was going to start playing a lot of events. And he looked half dead by the end. Yeah. You know, even And he has a lot of stamina and is able to play very well for long sessions. But even he was worn down by the end. And I don't know if he was playing his best because <coughs> it's draining. It's, it's, it's no, I mean, I'm draining. definitely. I mean, I hope I don't end up playing 33 events this year, too. <laughs> I mean, I just want to, I'm just going to play every day. I feel good about it. And hopefully I can go deep in the events I play, which will keep me out of other events. And I can just have a, a short and sweet World Series with a lot of caches and victories. In a whole different realm, in our research, I came across that you were still playing in some of the Magic the Gathering tournaments. And, of course, yeah. you've been really well-known and successful in that arena before poker. Is that still the case where even with all your poker yeah, no, success, actually, you're still uh, playing Magic? I just got back from a, a Magic tournament uh, in, see, I went to Houston a few weeks ago. I mean, Eric Froelich is one of my best friends from Magic, and he moved into my building in Brock Parker. So the three of us live there, and we all played on the Magic Pro Tour, like the circuit and traveling, and now we all live in the same building and play poker, but we also do the Magic things. Like, we're going to Puerto Rico. I'm actually missing the first week of the World Series for a big Magic <laughs> tournament in Puerto Rico, because it's kind of like I look at magic as it's it's competitive, but it's also fun and relaxing. And right. when you lose there, it's like whatever I lost, but you it's still not try the big your best. Poker. So I think it'll be good. I did it last year. I skipped the first week of the series, and we went to Hawaii. Me and Noah Boken, and we played in a tournament there, and stayed at the beach house with our friends for a week, and it was just the most awesome thing ever. We actually, I think we played a few events. I played the 40k, then I left to Hawaii and came back in the World Series, and it was great. I came back refreshed, and I felt better. So we're gonna do the same thing this year, except for we won't start the World Series. We'll go there and come back to Puerto Rico. Me, Brock, and Efro are gonna go. Thanks for joining us on The Scoop, brought to you by Full Tail Poker, and David Williams has been great, and we're going to bring him back for the very prestigious part three next it's week. It's only the rare player who gets three It parts. really is, only only the big stars, So uh, and the ones who are good interviewees. Right. <laughs> so join us next time and write to us on The Scoop at cardplayer.com. Thanks.